Alex, and it is officially a Friday. Now I'm going to give you guys two YouTube videos. The first one's going to be on my sports channel because less than 24 hours from now there is going to be a pay-per-view fight. It's going to be Mike Tyson, Iron Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. Now yes, I'm out on location. I'm at the Grove. I'm at the park. Unfortunately, I can't show you this big giant um, soccer field because there's people playing on the soccer. They're practicing and YouTube made some new rules. That means I can't mention nobody's first and last name without permission and that also means you cannot show um, people in the area because you don't want them to see the video and then you get sued and the last time I checked we're not rich and famous um, if something comes up so yeah that's why you see you're gonna see me mostly um, I might show you the trees or something like that in another video to let you know I'm at the Grove. You'll know because you'll be like, Alex is not at home. He's not in the backyard. Yes, I'm out on location. Um, maybe in the other video, I'll probably do a video tour so you can know that I'm actually at the Grove. Right now, I'm trying to practice social distancing and spread out so that way we're okay. All right, my prediction on who wins this fight. Mike Tyson is a former two-time world heavyweight champion. You know, that was like 20 years ago. He was like the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history. They had never had a fighter come in undefeated, you know, 20 and 0, knocking people out. You know, the way he came in was like 1985, early 1986. It was the 80s. I wasn't born yet. And Tyson was just coming in and knocking people out. Fights would end in one round, two rounds, three, four rounds. Fights would never go beyond three or four rounds with Mike Tyson because he had this strong knockout power. And the way Tyson hit you with his right hand, um, you were going to feel the force from Mike Tyson. Like you were going to get hit so hard that guys that were bigger and stronger than Mike Tyson did not want to fight Mike Tyson. So a lot of Tyson's fights, they had to handpick opponents because guys didn't know how to match up well with Tyson. And the way Tyson was just knocking people out... It, at that time, it was unheard of and unseen at the time. You had a few boxers that did that. You know, you had um, Jack Dempsey. That was way before my time. Um, you had um, Jack Johnson. Again, before my time. There were like a few guys that had a solid right hand that would just knock you out. <clears throat> and Tyson was one of these premier fighters that was destined to become the greatest fighter of all times. You know, he met Muhammad Ali and... Tyson just kept beating people. He had all these championship fights. He had seven title defenses. And before you know it, it was 1990, um, 1988, 1989, and Tyson beat Larry Holmes. And then he lost to Buster James Douglas, which was an upset and became the new undisputed heavyweight champion. And he had to fight, you know, Evander Holyfield. But then that happened five years later. He would beat Frank Bruno in a rematch, became the WBC. And that's how Tyson won the title twice. And then he had his two fights with Evander Holyfield, his fights with Lennox Lewis, and then he retired. Now, oh, here we fast forward to 20 something years later, 20, 25 years later. And Mike Tyson is out of retirement to fight Roy Jones Jr. Now, some people might say this is similar to Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather. I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say no. See, with Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao, you had to wait almost six years for that fight. With this, this came out of nowhere because Tyson said he was in good shape. He was ready to fight and to see Tyson still have that knockout power that fast speed it's impressive they always it's true what they say in the sweet science of boxing the last thing to go is power and Tyson can do this now I think Tyson could win the fight if it's just three four maybe five rounds I think it favors Mike Tyson to win because Tyson's fights end really fast. The, the, the shorter the fighter is, it's going to favor Mike Tyson. The longer the fight lasts, it starts to work against Mike Tyson. So I think we know Tyson's strengths and weaknesses in boxing. The shorter the fight, it, it favors Mike Tyson. I mean, if you get hit too many times by Mike Tyson's punch, um, the fight's over. Most guys, they never bounce back from Tyson's punch. Like, you got to be a very good guy to take a hit and get up and shake it off and keep boxing. 
and if you get hit too many times it could be a technical knockout it doesn't have to even necessarily be a knockout knockout just a technical knockout from Tyson that's all he needs um, to win this fight now let's start with Roy Jones Jr. He started his career in the late 80s, early 1990s. And Roy was kind of like a spinning image of Sugar Ray Leonard. Everything that Sugar Ray Leonard did in the Walter Wade and middleweight division, Roy Jones Jr. would repeat that history. Roy was so fast that guys couldn't even, they couldn't even uh, take his punches and then when they had fighters like Lynn Johnson come up, you had um, James Tony. all these guys were coming up and Roy was beating all these guys. All these guys that were supposed to be better than him in his class, he was beating. He was beating people in his class, he was beating people out of his class. And then by the time he got to 92, 93, 94, Roy made himself into a three-time world champion, then a four-time world champion. And then Roy stepped up, moved up in weight, became a middleweight, middle heavyweight and then Roy did the unthinkable Roy from out of nowhere went from lightweight to something that had never happened in almost a hundred years of boxing history he decided to become a heavyweight now at first people laughed and said it ain't gonna work you're too small you'll get hit with knockout power and Roy's response was well if guys like uh Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis can do it, then I can do it. And he made that same transition. You know, Roy put on the 20 pounds of muscle, and Roy had like at least two or three fights as a heavyweight. And when he won the championship, it was a shocking moment um, for Roy, not just for Roy Jones Jr., but in boxing history, we had never had somebody um, do what he did. The only thing that I wish Roy Jones should have done in his boxing career is that he should have stayed heavyweight. You know, remain heavyweight. You know, once you become a heavyweight, um, stay heavyweight. Don't don't go back down. You know, we could have had Roy Jones versus Mike. If you really think about it, around 2001, 2002, post-2003, we could have had Roy Jones versus Lennox Lewis. That would have been a big marquee fight. Roy versus James Tony. You know, we could have had that as a heavyweight. You know, we could have had those fights. And Roy dropped the 20 pounds, went back to light heavyweight, and had a fight with Antonio Tarver. Then had a third fight with Antonio Tarver. Now, for him to come out of retirement is a chance to make history. But can Roy actually pull it off? Like, Roy's fast. Roy, from what I've seen, is one of the best um, defensive fighters in boxing history. But can he stay away from Tyson's knockout power? Can Roy be fast and quick enough to hit Tyson, move away? Because most guys who fight Tyson, most of the guys get hurt, and then the fight's over. Now, I think Roy can win the fight on a point system. So if Roy take it on points and hit, stick, and jab, and move away from Tyson, and keep the fight as long as he can stretch the fight out, Roy will win. But if Roy finds himself in a situation where it's, it's a big hit after a big hit after another big hit, then Roy's going to go down, and it's going to be hard for Roy to get up and shake off those hits, because Tyson's bigger, Tyson's heavier, and nobody really walks away. Like, you got to, like, when Evander got hit with Tyson's best punch, he took, he got up and he could take it. But Roy is not as big as those heavyweights. He was a heavyweight, but Roy wasn't as big as those guys. So I think if Roy wins, it has to be on a point system. He got to hit, jab, stick, and move if Roy's going to win. Now, overall, who really wins the championship? Because at first, I thought it was going to be an expedition fight, which it is. But then they added a championship title on the line to make it more interesting. And I'm like, to me, if Roy wins the belt... He would just have another championship to add it on to his list. If Tyson wins the belt, it would be like you could imagine what if he would became a three-time heavyweight champion. Now, who wins overall? I think, and this is just me, because if I know boxing and I know entertainment, that might become a split unanimous decision. Because if Tyson flat out wins, then you expect it. 
if Roy Jones win, then again, you would you would be shocked that a guy half Tyson size win. If it ends in a tie, then it could set up the opportunity for a Roy Jones versus Mike Tyson part two. Hopefully it doesn't turn into anything like a Vander Holyfield Tyson part two. So that's always that main concern. Now, people are saying Roy should have never taken the fight. Well, the thing is, this was a fight that was going to happen 20 years ago. So this is my game prediction for that fight. So you got my thoughts on Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. That's less than 24 hours. So I wanted to give my thoughts on making a boxing video for my sports channel. Now, I don't expect everybody to watch the video. Until then, peace.